with a deft conclusion to the series and a thorough examination of each major character's backstory. Shogun Episode 10 left viewers wondering if Yoshi Toronaga's triumph over Ishido qualified him to become the Shogun. The critically praised FX series was based on James Clavel's Shogun novel, which itself was inspired by the historical narrative of Tokugawa Ieyasu. The tremendous changes Japan went through at the close of the 16th century set the scenario for Shogun, whose ending showed Toronaga's purpose was really to topple the regents and lead Japan into a new era. Only Yabushige, who killed himself in retaliation for Ishido's assistance in killing Moriko, learned the entire scope of Toronaga's scheme directly from him. Shogun's conclusion made it evident that Toronaga would win the war even though the combat between Ishido and Toronaga's men was not shown. Though his ship was wrecked, John Blackthorn, whose story was based on William Adams, dreamed of going home and getting old thinking of Mariko. Consequently, Blackthorn might never set foot in England again. The bittersweet conclusion of Shogun demonstrated Yoshi Toronaga's character complexity. As demonstrated by his talk with Yabushige around the end of episode 10, Lord Toranaga had been quietly pursuing his goal of becoming shogun the entire time. As the first legitimate shogun in years, Toranaga envisioned a time of peace for Japan during which there would be no conflicts over who would rule the nation. He would assume the role of supreme military leader. The whole nature of Toranaga's plot, which included defeating Ishido before the conflict even broke out, was unknown to even his closest associates. Toranaga's strategy will work, and he will ultimately take the shogunate. The real ruler of Japan, Tokugawa Ieyasu, succeeded the Council of Elders during the Battle of Sekigahara against Ishida Mitsunari, and is the inspiration for Lord Toranaga's persona. Although Yodo no Kata, the mother of the Teiko, and her successor initially supported Ieyasu, their impact on his authority was negligible. However, Iyasu moved against Toyotomi Hidori, the heir, a few years after asserting his authority as shogun. After this attack, his mother became a nun and the heir committed seppuku. While Ishida was based on Ishida Mitsunari, Yodo no Kata served as the model for shogun's Ochiba no Kata. Since the beginnings of Tokugawa Iyasu's shogunate are the basis for James Clavel's shogun book, it stands to reason that Lord Toranaga's tale ends similarly to that of his real-life counterpart. It was simple for Toranaga to rally supporters of Ishido with the help of Ochiba no Kata, who stands in for the heir until he reaches adulthood. Ishido had no chance of winning the battle without the heir leading the charge. For this reason, Toranaga's scheme was complete before he even saw Ishido in combat which is why Shogun chose not to depict the entirety of the Battle of Sekigahara. In many ways, Lady Mariko's passing in Shogun Episode 9 benefited Lord Toranaga. First of all, since the daimyos discovered that Ishido was holding captives, it caused unrest in the Asaka castle and undermined his authority. After Mariko was sacrificed, Ishido lost the backing of several of the most influential lords in the area and was further weakened by internal strife within the Council of Regents. Furthermore, Ochiba no Kata suffered with Lady Mariko's passing. Ochiba and Mariko were practically raised as sisters, and after the death of the former, the latter changed her mind about the war. The scene where Ochiba no Kata read poetry by Mariko to her son showed how deeply the heir's mother was affected by Mariko's passing. Ochiba probably came to the conclusion that it was not worthwhile to put her son in danger of dying in a battle with Toranaga, especially because there was now much less likelihood of Ishido coming out on top. Mariko made an attempt, prior to her passing, to get Ochiba to back Toranaga, which ultimately transpired. Toranaga found it simple to establish his dominance with the heir at his side. Ishido had already lost the battle when he arrived at the Battle of Sekigahara. At the end of Shogun, Lord Toranaga ordered the burning of John Blackthorne's ship. Though Toranaga presented it as the work of an Ajiro trader, the Lord of Kanto had taken covert measures to ensure that Blackthorne would never be allowed to leave Japan. In exchange for the engine's life, Mariko negotiated a contract with the Portuguese that included the destruction of Blackthorne's ship. Although Blackthorne would not die, his life would not be spared. 
while Toronago was able to maintain a strong relationship with his unconventional ally. The Portuguese ensured that the English Protestant would never bring his allies to Japan. Toronaga claimed that the reason he liked having Blackthorn around was that the engine made him laugh. Furthermore, Blackthorn assisted in providing Toronaga with diversions. As soon as the engine set foot in Japan, he caused havoc, which allowed Yashai more leeway to maneuver, while his adversaries were preoccupied with the barbarian and his vessel. The Portuguese merchants and the Council of Regents were too preoccupied with Blackthorn's situation to notice that the Lord of Kanto was poised to seize power. Though Blackthorn thought he was applying to Toronaga, in reality the opposite was true. Among the most fascinating individuals in Shogun was Yabushige. Yabushi was Shogun's wild card. He was devoted to himself alone and obsessed with death. He died in episode 10. Yabushige was sentenced to commit seppuku after it was revealed that he had planned the attack on the Asaka castle with Ishido. Serving as his second, Toronaga set up what is possibly the most significant sequence in the entire production. Yabushige was going to die, so he had the opportunity to speak with Toronaga directly and find out the truth about his plan. To Yabushige, Lord Toronaga revealed in detail his strategy and outlook for Japan's future. At this point, a montage sequence showing Toronaga's triumph over Ishido was incorporated in Shogun's climax. But when Yabushige questioned Toronaga about whether becoming Shogun was always his goal, the Lord of Kanto remained silent. Lord Toronaga's expression softened slightly as the seppuku ceremony came to an end. This suggested that Yabushige was correct Toronaga had always intended to become Shogun. Yabushige is dead. Thus the truth will never be known. The opening scene of Shogun episode 10 featured an elderly John Blackthorn dozing off on his bed while his grandchildren discussed the sword hanging on his wall. The youngsters, in what seemed to be a flash-forward set decades after the events of Shogun, talked about their grandfather's victory over savages in a big fight. With Lady Mariko's cross in his grasp, Blackthorn seems to have finally made his way back to England in the scenario. Suffice it to say, the opening scene of the episode was a dream, since Blackthorn abandoned the cross in the water. The engine's fate, in Lord Toronaga's opinion, is to stay in Japan. Once the engine have constructed a new ship, Toronaga will only reveal the truth about what really happened to Blackthorn's vessel. Toronaga will probably burn it too, even in such a case. In James Clavel's Shogun novel, it is hinted that John Blackthorn spent the remainder of his life in Japan and never went back to England. Blackthorn was blind to the fact that Toronaga had control over the engine's destiny from the start. Blackthorn will never leave Japan, hence the dream sequence that opens the Shogun finale will never come true. Even if the action-packed ending of Shogun episode 10 may not have lived up to expectations, it was still a fantastic way to wrap up the series. The episode closely mirrored the conclusion of the Shogun novel, while paying homage to the original work. According to their real-life equivalents, Shogun was based on the interwoven tales of Lord Toronaga, John Blackthorn, and Lady Mariko, all of whom influenced the course of the next two centuries in Japanese history. Blackthorn and Mariko become just puppets in Toronaga's lengthy game. He would take office as Shogun in Edo.